It's easy to say that alcohol affects your brain when you're drunk, but what is it doing over the long haul? If we're living in a generation where we really are trying to figure out cognitive performance. I think a lot of us have uh, become a little bit infatuated with how we can think better and how we can kind of accelerate how we feel in terms of our brain. We reach a physical limit, but who knows where the mental limit is. So there's some interesting data when we look at how alcohol affects our brain longer term or more chronically. So let's break it down. You can save 25% off your order at Thrive Market, your entire grocery order. Okay, so Thrive Market is an online grocery store where you order what you want and it gets delivered to your doorstep, but it's organized in a super cool way no matter what kind of dietary pattern you're following. It's unbelievably cool. So the nice thing is that link down below saves you 25% off so you could order your entire grocery order, your entire cart, and then save 25% off of it, plus get a free gift. So you use that link down below, then you order by whatever kind of diet type you're doing. It's super intuitive, super easy, gets delivered to your doorstep, and you're off to the races. So big thanks to them, and again, that link is down below in the description, just drop that box down. So there was a study that was published in the journal Alcohol and Alcoholism, and it took a look at 48 chronic alcohol drinkers, Okay, and it compared that with 36 healthy individuals. So essentially alcoholics versus non-alcoholics. And what this study did is it took a look at how they perform tasks. So a battery of different neuropsychological tests to really determine overall function. They found there was a decrease in attention span as well as much worse executive function in those that were in the alcoholic group. Now these are both characteristics of the prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobe. So at first we look at this and we say, okay, well, alcohol is somehow affecting the frontal lobe and decision making, because that's what executive function is, overall decision making. But this is done with a bunch of different neuropsychological tests. That doesn't tell us everything. There can be biases there, there can be all kinds of different things, especially when there's only you know, less than 100 people. So we have to look at another study that took a look at neuroimaging, took a look at how the brain was actually firing under neuroimaging. This study was published in the journal Alcoholism. And what it found was pretty alarming. There was a decrease in white matter as well as a decreased volume of gray matter. Now in general context, that means the brain got smaller, but let me paint a picture of what that really looks like so we have an understanding. Okay, so we have our cells in our brains, our, our neurons, right? So these brain cells are these nice, beautiful cells that do their thing. And then we have what are called axons. Axons are going to be like big tree branches. And these big tree branches send messages out, just like a tree branch looks, like it's an electrical signal coming out. Then we have what is called a dendrite. Now a dendrite is like a smaller branch, and it reaches out and it catches a signal that was sent out by the axon. Okay, so it's this plethora of network of different branches that all are sending signals, right? It's very important that we understand that. Well, the gray matter holds the dendrites and the cell bodies, okay? The white matter holds most of the axons, okay? Now, there's a lot of you know, nebulous territory in there, a lot of different moving pieces. Bottom line is that if you have a decrease in both gray and white matter, you're having a decrease in the amount of signals that are being able to be transmitted and less actual neurons, less actual brain cells. So it's really a big, fancy, complicated way of saying the brain was shrinking and overall brain cells were dying. But this whole labyrinth, this whole setup is so important because when we send a signal from a neuron to another neuron and it goes across the synapse and the synaptic cleft and it does that whole thing, that is how we build what is called long-term potentiation. Okay, now imagine this for a second. You have the Grand Canyon however many million billion years ago. It started out as a trickle of water running through the clay, right? And then over the centuries and over the millennia, it started to dig in deeper and deeper and deeper and eventually formed a canyon to what it is now, a big ravine that water can just seamlessly flow through. That's kind of how I liken uh, that to neuroplasticity or long-term potentiation. So when brain cells are sending signals and we have this network of electrical charges that are occurring, this is exactly what it is. We have these signals that are going through and eventually they get trained so well that the signals become good. So if you have a consistent like thought pattern, good or bad, that's exactly how you are paving the way for those, right? You're digging that system. Well, this same study also found that this alcohol had an effect on neurotransmitters as well. Now, neurotransmitters are like the little vessels that carry a signal, essentially. They are just that, a neurotransmitter. So when a cell sends a signal, a neuron sends a signal, it goes out the axon and then it goes through the synapse. Well, when it goes across the synapse, it has to kind of jump. And when it jumps, it's a neurotransmitter that actually jumps and sends the signal. 
So if we have less bridges, that's a problem already, but if we have less overall neurotransmitters, that's less ability to jump in the first place. So instead of having 10 bridges that we normally jump over, we maybe have five. And of the five bridges, maybe only three neurotransmitters are working. So you can see how we're getting to this point where we're by diminishing and diminishing and diminishing, we are losing our cognitive function. So no matter what, we're in a bad situation there. Hence why the gray matter and the white matter seems to be decreasing so much. So with alcohol, it's a slippery slope. We don't really know the entire picture there. We know that it's having an effect on the brain and we don't know exactly what the chronic situation is. We do know that alcohol being a toxin converts from ethanol into what's called acetaldehyde, which makes it so that the liver has to override everything else that it's doing to deal with the acetaldehyde. That alone can have an inflammatory effect, which may in fact have an effect on what's called neuroinflammation. Okay, neuroinflammation could be making it so that those synapses are so foggy the signal can't get across very well either because it's, there's so much inflammation. The bottom line is that with alcohol, it's not just a short-term thing. If you find that when you've been drinking for quite a while, your brain function just isn't as good, there is pretty solid evidence that something could be going on cognitively. I wish I had a solid answer other than to reduce the drinking or have an effect there, but that's the science and I'm sticking to it. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.